Well, hello, everyone. I'm Tom Price. I'm the editor of Calvary Chapel Magazine, and I have the absolute pleasure here, as I turn my phone off, have the absolute pleasure of welcoming Pastor Mike McClure from Calvary Christian Fellowship in San Jose, California. It's a Calvary Chapel affiliate. And uh, Mike and I are going to talk a little bit about what's going on out there and what's going on across the country on a lot of different uh, areas. But Mike, we just want to welcome you. It's so good to see you. And uh, as we've known each other uh, for a couple of years, quite a few years, 17 years at least, and uh, it's so good to be able to visit with you here. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Tom. It's a blessing to, to see what you're doing with the Calvary Magazine and to read all the, the neat things that God's doing through the Calvaries around the world now. It's, 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 it's awesome. Yeah, it, it's amazing what God is doing. We know it's all Him. It is all the Lord. And, uh, you know, we're just going to also, while we're waiting, we're letting people know, too, that 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 we are also, uh, we, we people can go to our website and pick up a news feed. We're putting out content every day now because, obviously, we haven't been able to print uh, since the whole COVID thing hit. So we've been putting daily content on our website. And now we've we have some geniuses that are helping us out, and they've, done this so that churches can put this on for free and to their website and, and all the fresh content that 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 they want to put up there. So we'll mention that a few times here. And uh, so anyway, we're here. Uh, Tom Price here, editor of Calvary Chapel magazine on with Pastor Mike McClure, a friend from Calvary Christian Fellowship in San Jose, California. He's a Calvary Chapel affiliate. He's been the senior pastor since 2003. Uh, he, he and his wife, Brenda, have seven children, and the youngest, Ruthie, well, if she sees her dad preaching, I think she yells, preach it, daddy, and, uh, and when he's, he's, he shares with his kids that uh, to help build the kingdom, and I think that's your way of kind of building, building the ark with your kids, I believe, right, Mike? Yeah, I've uh, been training my kids for a long time, just yeah. reading through Genesis. And uh, we had Ken Ham here a number of years ago for the first time, and we talked about the judgment with Noah. So through the years to get my kids to help in the ministry, I uh, I remind them that we're building an ark, you know, <laughs> like like Noah did, because we're living in the last days. Even though this building's not going to float, um, the fire judgment's coming, and 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 God wants us to to prepare, you know, for that yeah. and and to be a light and to be like uh, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So yeah yeah they bought it they 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 uh they've been helping me ever since wow that is great now we know that uh, uh pastor mike is the favorite son of don and Jean mcclure <laughs> other brothers may argue that point <laughs> uh, but at least we can say it here and they can't come at us now uh, we know the mandate at your church mike is to love jesus and make his love known and i know all you've been doing that for a long time even when your father was running the church there and that's an interesting story all in itself how that began but and it, as we talked the other day the, the calvary chapel pastors in the beginning wanted to go along with this we didn't know how serious this was with this um COVID 19 but now it's gotten to a different point hasn't it uh and um with this shutting down and uh, how is this impacted on your fellowship pastor mike i think like most pastors it's at the beginning the president said hey let's let's uh you know close the country down for two weeks and then he did it for another two weeks and then the governors took over and the frustrating thing is you have people in your church that are sick and i've had people that have had you know not COVID 19 per se we have had some people that have had that mm -hmm. but um they've recovered i don't know anyone personally that's died of it but We've had other issues and you can't go to the hospital. You know, you can't you can't visit people and all these rules that were going on. Just frustrating, of course, with uh, the liquor stores are open. Uh, Planned Parenthood's open and churches can't be open and you're not essential. So I think it's been frustrating for for every pastor I know. Yes. Yeah. I, in, in the beginning, everybody, I mean, God used this to it to increase our online visibility. I, I know that so many churches that weren't online before now uh have learned the hard way through all this so he, he's prepared us and and through through this the lord has prepared us through this but now this has gotten a little too much i know yeah we actually did invest in fixing a lot of our streaming uh we mm -hmm. went to i think youtube live 
Live and then some other things we started doing. And I've talked to a number of pastors that are, are doing that, and it's been good. But right. one thing I found from different pastors as well that have researched how many of their Zoom followers, uh, one pastor said he had a thousand followers when he researched it, they were actually in Ukraine. I mean, they're not going to come to his church. So I have heard from a lot of pastors saying, I, you know, our giving's up. I have more people following me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And I, I don't know if we want to open. But the, the danger, I think, is when you open, you may not have anybody in your church. You know, that's the, that's the one thing that we should be afraid of. And if you do open, especially in California and the county we're in, you know, they, in danger is going to jail and in, in fines and all the rest. But, yeah, I, I think it's gone too far. I, I definitely think, um, you know, the, the misinformation is, is so vast that you really can't keep up with it. But it, uh, right. it's gotten to the point where I think the church, um, you know, I don't know if you read the letter from John MacArthur, you know, last week. I thought that was a great letter. Uh, right. was Caesar in charge of the church, and he's like, no, you know, we need to render to God the things that are God's, and not right. to Caesar the things that are God's. I thought that was a good quote. I, I used that on Sunday, but yeah, yeah it's gone good. too far. Yeah. So, I, and I know that you mentioned the other day that, you know, people are literally dying with suicide, alcoholism, child abuse is up, domestic violence is up, and how can you be, how can you shepherd, really, your flock if you can't be with them? Yeah, it's it's like a you can't. Yeah, it's 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 like you're not. We had the DA call us. We opened up on the 31st of uh, what was it March, on a Sunday morning. The district attorney called and told me you can't open up. And I told him that you know we we can because people have needs, and I know from our church, people who work in the nursing, uh, in the hospital, suicide rate is up exponentially. I mean it is. Out of the, I, another guy in the church, he, used to go, he goes to AA and he has guys that he was with that have drunken themselves to death. And so oh you God. have domestic violence, child abuse, all these things we know are up across the charts. Right. And so I told the district attorney, I said, if there is a child in the middle of the street, we're by an expressway. And you're telling me I can't go help that kid out there because it's against the law. I'm telling you, I'm going to go help him. So if you want to come and arrest me and tell me I can't help people, then that's, that's, a, that's between you and... Uh, you know, you, you and your authorities, but my authority comes from God. It says, I need to help people. So I, I don't see how that could be illegal. And the church is essential. I told them because the hospitals in America were started by the church. You know, all the right. education systems, uh, David Barton says, I think it's 98% of all universities today were at one time seminaries. So you have the church that has been essential from the foundation of this country. And even before that, um, with with the revivals and the Great Awakening that took place with John Whitfield, which, by the way, I mentioned to you the other day that book, um, If You Can Keep It by Eric Metaxas. It's a great book. talks about the golden triangle that right. the founding fathers had. and also talks about the Great Awakening that really spurred America to become America as we know it today. It right. was the churches that were aflame with righteousness. It was the pastors that were speaking up for the freedom to worship that really drove the the war for independence and i think we've forgotten just the revivals that that have brought the gospel that has brought freedom mm -hmm. and i think we were talking about too the um the uh, amazon prime if if you haven't seen it the um uh, billy graham's uh it was a documentary uh called an extraordinary life and mm -hmm. in that documentary it goes through the history of his life from when he got saved to to all the things that he had really done i mean more than anybody he's he's preached to more people alive but what he did in that is he brought down uh what was going on in the south the the, the segregation was happening. Yeah, the segregation he the gospel broke segregation in this country through what billy graham yeah. did it was sharing the gospel and that stopped the whole segregation in the south yeah the if documentary you can, also if, if you can explain that I, I think the viewers would like like to hear this well he, share the yeah, if you if you watch the documentary, I think it's just a great thing to watch because they give the gospel through it, as long as it's on Amazon Prime. But what he talks about in the interview and uh, different people that they had is he refused to go to the South unless he can have a non-segregated meeting. Mm -hmm. So when the meeting began to happen and thousands were showing up, they had separated you know the, the whites here and the blacks here, and there was a rope down the middle dividing everybody and. Billy had said, look, I agreed not to have a segregated meeting. So he went to the head usher and says, I got to do something about that. Can you please remove that rope? And he refused. 
So in the middle of the crowd with, with everything going on, Billy went down there himself and he removed that rope. <laughs> and, and, and that so, they pinpointed to that moment really began to change the way people were looking at segregation. And mm -hmm. it was the gospel. And, and of course he was working with, uh, with other people at the time too. But that moment was really the moment that, that yeah. things began to change in the South. So yeah. great, great, um, great history of what God yeah. does through who are willing to stand up for what's right and, and not so much against something, but for, for the gospel. And that's why I loved with Billy's life is that it was about Christ. Everything was always about Christ. And I think that it goes on to talk about Russia too, what happened with the, the iron curtain coming down, but it was the gospel that changed all of these events. And it's as powerful today as it was then. And, and that's what we forget. And I think as pastors, we've forgotten that we're so essential because we got to get the gospel out. It has yeah. to get out. Culture's dying. People are literally killing themselves. And God's called us to take that message out. And we should not be ashamed of that. Yeah. We should not be. We, we should be so thankful for that and see the results of that in history and know that God's can. He's going to do it again. He will do it if yeah. we if we if we go out. Right. Do it. If, we, if, if we're praying and, and, and praying for the like like they were for the uh, for, for the re revival in Wales back at the turn of the of the century there. Uh, a lot of young people just on their knees praying for the to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it kicked off a revival that impacted up until really the first world war, but it changed lives in Wales. And you can actually go to Wales and still uh, open the newspaper there and turn. It looks like box scores from a baseball game. They sent reporters out to every church and you could see how many people they, they call. Uh, they didn't call it getting saved. I forgot what they called it now, but uh, the people that, um, Get, that gave their life to Christ at every church. And it was amazing. Sometimes 100, sometimes 30, mm. so, you know, but these were small churches. And I hope, I pray that we're on, on, the, on the verge of this again. Thank you for standing up because it's going to take pastors and, across our country for saying, no, Jesus is essential. And the church is essential. And People need the message of the gospel right now, not not two months down the road, not three months down the road right now. And if it comes to a head and people get arrested, well, then that's what's going to happen. But that's certainly not the end of the world, is it? If you spend a night in jail, it's it's certainly not going to. It's a prison ministry. You know, they keep letting people out of California. They let them out of prison. And uh, the joke around here is. Well, they're just letting all the prisoners out to put the pastors and the Christians in <laughs> going to jail, you know, but yeah. Yeah. I think we have, um, I had a lot of pastors in our area, you know, that were asking and had called a zoom call with them right after we had opened and they were, they were really expecting, they said, well, Hey, we're praying for you. You know, did the sheriff show up? Did the police show up? I said, um, no, the mercury news showed up, but, um, oh, there was some police, but they were here for church. So <laughs> <laughs> they weren't here to arrest me in that. In fact, they actually thanked, uh, us for opening and he wow. said you know the civil disobedience at this point is without question you know this is mm -hmm. something i'm going to do even as an officer for the san jose pd and I, and I think that's a message out to all the pastors is that the only friends the police have right now is is the church it's and it's the church. Yeah. they're they're focused on the gospel you know not not the the social gospel and not you know social justice i think those things are distractions from the truth and other things that, that God would uh, not have us go down, but to stay true to the gospel and true to to the message, just like Paul through the book of Acts. I think that's what the Lord is is wanting us to do. If there's going to be a revival, it's going to take a Winfield. It's going to take a, a Billy Graham. And that's what, in a way, we're, we're all to be doing. And as we do that, let the chips fall where they may. You know, I can imagine Paul, he just went into a town. And he's like, I'm just going to let the chips fall where they may. Right. And he ended up in jail at times. He ended yeah. up getting beaten. Uh, and, and yet God uh, God honored it. And I think that's what he's looking for, those that will do the same thing he does. Like it says in Psalm 138, too, that we'd hold his word, you know, above his name, that it would be that valuable to us and that important to get out. Right. Uh, we'll take a little break here and say, tell everybody that's come on here in the last couple of minutes. And I'm Tom Price, the editor of Calvary Chapel Magazine, and privileged to be talking to Pastor Mike McClure of Calvary Christian Fellowship in San Jose. He's a Calvary Chapel affiliate. And we've 
known each other, been friends for 17, 18 years. And it's, it's a privilege to be able to talk to you today and just to understand what God's been pouring into you through this time, this shutdown, and all everything that's going on in our country. So, uh, Pastor Mike, welcome. We're, we're so glad to, uh, to have you with us. Just to let you, the people know that, ask them to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and that they can go on calvarychapelmagazine.org and, and see this. It will be on Facebook. You can watch it over the next couple of days. And we just want to encourage the pastors that are probably wondering, you know, what do I do? And, you know, they're, 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 they're reading the book of Acts, and they're trying to determine what, how God is leading them. So how would you encourage them, Mike? How, how would you encourage some of the pastors that are just not sure on how to approach this biblically? Well, a couple of things we did here is I, I wanted to open right away. I just thought we are a church. A church is here like a hospital. We should help people. People want to come to church. And I just had to pray about it. And I knew you got to do things together. So I needed all of the our, our, our board, our elders and our staff to be on the same page. So when we opened and we were we would meet and we would pray and some things that hit me as I kept, you know, just asking the Lord, I was waiting for peace. And it's frustrating because you got the pressure, you got the fear, you got, um, you know, breaking the law. And I think as you begin to study the scripture and you had to go back and study it again and just look at it, and just remind myself, what, what's, what are we called to do? What's our mission? Romans 13 talks about, you know, that authority, that governing authority. Right. And of course, Peter and first uh, Peter two talks about obeying the magistrate, those, the governors, those in authority, the laws. And so a lot of pastors, I think, you know, you're kind of looking at that. Well, is this, what should we do? You know, it, when they're telling us we can't meet. And, and I think that's where you have to realize both Paul and Peter, you know, were, were killed for disobeying the law, mm -hmm. to obey the law. But there's a point like in the um, story with Corey Tinboom, where they're like, we have to obey God rather than man. And I think we're at that point personally. And then what do you do about that? So I think I came to that point. We're there. And then I really had to examine, am I a, a pastor or a hireling? And mm -hmm. I was struggling with that because a hireling is someone who's there just for the job. And doing the live streams easy, you know, uh, right. dealing with people's messy. It's a hard job. It's like being in an <laughs> ER versus being a, a virtual doctor telling people how to put their IV in or something. You know, I just look at it like you can't do ministry that way. You got to be with the sheep and and smell like the sheep. And, and that's what a shepherd does. Right. And so I was really wanting to meet and, and praying and praying. And there was a point where we're teaching through the scripture. We're going through the whole Bible in two years. And we were in Psalms and we're at Psalm 73. And as you study Asaph, as he's going through this, this pain and suffering of just watching the evil people get away with everything. And he was so upset and frustrated. He almost slipped and, you know, walked away from the Lord. But he said, until I came into the sanctuary in the middle of that psalm, then he said, I recognize their end. I recognize in a moment they're going to just flee. They're going to go straight down to fire. They're going to be judged. And it changed his perspective. And that perspective changes for when we come to church. So every Sunday now we've been open and people line up and I always have at least two people just in tears saying to me, I'm so glad you opened or I'm, I'm not, this isn't my church, but I just needed to come to church because I'm desperate for fellowship. Wow. And so I've taken opportunity. Our sanctuary is almost full. We have people, I've told the pastors in town, I said, Hey, I have all your people here and I'm not bad mouthing anybody. I, I love these guys. I've encouraged them to open, but I'm not judging them if they don't. But I am telling them, like, look, these people are desperate. Someone has got to minister to them. And that's what I, I look at value. Like I told the district attorney's office, I said, look, you can't tell me to stop helping people. If you want to come arrest me, here I am. You know right. where I am. And he's gotten to know us. We're almost on a first name basis. He calls me once a week now and in our office and says, hey, you guys aren't social distancing. You had these kids in this location. Um, you're going to open your school now. You can't do that. And and then he'll also say to me, he says, now, it doesn't mean I agree with these rules. I actually agree with you, but I have to give you these rules. So uh -huh. what's happening in our culture is mass confusion. Mm -hmm. And what I told pastors in town, I said, listen, we can't look to the county or to the, the mayor or anyone else, the governor. We cannot look to them for leadership. Mm -hmm. Never in the history of the church has Paul gone to the, the council of the city and asked him if he could preach the gospel or if he could meet. <laughs> you just never do that. 
So to me, it's like, why in America are we trusting these pagan leaders to, right. to know best for the people? So I had a pastor come to me and tell me, basically, you shouldn't open and um, don't tell us to open because I know God's told us not to open. And I said, listen, they're telling you you can't gather. T- you know, they're telling you, you. He said, well, they're not telling us we can't worship. And I said, yeah, but that's coming next. And then a week later, then Gavin came. Newsom says, you can't sing. So <laughs> now it's like, what his excuse is. But that's what they're doing. They're trying to squeeze us out. And it's a political year. We know there's a bunch of things going on, but I look at it as like, I don't have time to sit on the sideline. And I know since we've opened, I've been blessed every Sunday. My wife will say, she she says, if you just open the church for me to gather with other believers, it was just worth it for me. Just because <laughs> she's like, I, I need to get a perspective here. And you're not getting it, especially in our town where everyone's absolutely scared to death. And we've only had 181 people die of this COVID-19. I call the county. We've called there multiple times. They've blocked our number because they won't give us the stats on the suicide, domestic violence, or all the other things that they have. They've refused to give us those numbers, probably because they're much higher than the COVID numbers. Wow. So it's just it's frustrating. You're living in a, a country that's, that's working against you for the first time as a pastor, mm-hmm. as a minister. Right. But that's where you have to say, God, I'm just going to go do it. I'm just going to go do it. And whatever that looks like for a church. We have three other churches are using our facility because they're renting a place that they said you can't meet. And so uh, they, they're they here. Some was in a, One was in a movie theater, another was in a, like a county building. So we're just letting anyone that wants to come use our facility, hey, you can come use it. Because wow. you know I know what they're going through and the same pressure I'm going through. If you just, whatever you can do to meet the needs of the people as a pastor, I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. Right. And so it's... I don't know what it's like everywhere else in the world, but man, this Santa Clara County is supposedly, I think, the most uh, strictest county in, in California right now. Wow. But, but they haven't done anything. They haven't showed up. You're right. Except the guys, the police that were coming to worship the Lord yeah. and, and hear the word taught. <laughs> Which, that, 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 speaks, that speaks loudly, doesn't it? And uh, you, we, we talked a little bit, too, about some of with the, uh, the rioters and, and, and how they seem to have a freedom um that and they're, they're causing damage and hurting people hurting businesses um but under the flag of protesting but there's but the, and that seems to be okay under the a lot of the government's kind of viewing at least in the statewide and the local at least what we hear from california can you speak to that what's how, how does that work well i think it matches the you know we have a lot of liberal politicians and mm-hmm. so that that kind of goes along with the chaos I'm sure that they'd like to have during election year. You know, a lot of this, again, is, I think, politics. And and it's easy to get involved with that. I know some pastors, it's like it's all about the politics and getting the right person in an office. And I think most of us as Calvary pastors, we recognize you can't, like Chuck used to say, legislate morality. Right. But what you can do is recognize the deceit and expose that and, and, and share that with the congregation. So I look at the numbers the COVID number, I look at the rioters and we talk about Black Lives Matter. And I read, you know, from their website that they're a Marxist group, that they are there to to create turmoil, to break down society, because uh, that's what Marxism does in our culture. They're they're atheists, they're for homosexuality, they're for uh, destroying the nuclear family. And I think the church isn't hearing that from anywhere else. You know, they're, right. or they're, they're just reading the news and they don't even know that. They think that this is a great organization. And they're trusting the politicians. They think that they have their best interest. And uh, I remember I was on a call. This is just before we opened in early, uh, somewhere in the mid-March with uh, Tony Perkins was hosting a kind of a Zoom um, chat meeting with um, the president. I think uh, I tuned in when it was uh, the Attorney General Barr. And Barr had said, if you're a pastor, you love your flock. And so there's going to be all this chaos going on, but you love the flock. And you have every right to open up if Walgreens is open or Walmart is open. If these stores are open, you have every right constitutionally to open up. And those stores don't love people that walk in like you love people. And they don't have a First Amendment right like the church has a First Amendment right. And if you want to open up and they're harassing you, you call me. I'll send you personally an attorney. Wow. And that's what we did. I ended up calling Bob Tyler and Bob works with um, with uh, Barr. Uh-huh. And he's uh, filed. So we, we sued, you know, the county. We're suing the governor and not because we're mad at them, but because then he can take care of the First Amendment, which I view doesn't give me permission 
that First Amendment keeps the government in its corner. The Constitution right. isn't there to give us permission to do what we're doing. It keeps the, the, gov uh, the government in check. And our job is to feed the flock. Our job is to minister. And I'm thankful we have that right. And I think the county, for the most part, and the police department and the sheriff department, because we have them in our church, they're for us doing that. You know, they're, wow. they're, uh, they're not for this whole social distancing. And, right. and they're not going to enforce any of those laws. So I think pastors, were, a lot of times we're afraid. And I had that pressure on me, too. And then I had my insurance guy, who's my brother, called and told me a list of all the things he's reading to every pastor. If you open up. And you have a, a civil, you know, issue, and you get sued. We're not going to protect you. Insurance company won't protect you. You're on your own. <laughs> so I told him, "Are you telling this to every pastor?" He says, "Well, yeah, I have to." And I go, "You're scaring everyone to death. No wonder why they don't open up." And I just said, "You know, I, I'm at the point where I don't care anymore, because right. to me, God's going to have to take. We we'll really have to trust God to take care of it for the sake of ministering to the people. And if we value the heart, the you know, like God values of the sheep." and the mind, and they're being fed and tended to the way God, I believe, that's his compassion for the multitudes. If we put ourselves in that place, I, I know he'll fight for you. I know he'll, he'll do it, and he has. We haven't had any problems. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think it's so important for, for everyone to hear. Yeah, we had the Mercury News uh, newspaper uh, uh, um, uh, news reporter would show up, and he was every week. He put us in the paper. And uh, he'd say bad things about us, you know, how we're going to spread COVID and all the comments were, you know, derogatory, evil we are. And uh, he kept showing up and we just kept loving him and sharing the gospel. And uh, he finally showed up and said, did the, did the DA call you? I said, yeah, he did. Did they show up? No. Did the sheriff show up? No. Did the police? I said, no, you're the only one here. See, God must have a plan for you. you know? You're the only one. And he was disappointed. He thought he was going to get the whole crowd after us. But uh, it would be the scoop. He would be able to. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think people see through the news. You know, I think that, yeah. that we as pastors need to go with what we know God says and, right. and know that our people see it too. Yeah. I remember Pastor Chuck used to say this, and he would probably say this if he was still with us, that this isn't political anymore. This is biblical. And what right. you guys are doing, what all your church and the churches that are, are open, it's biblical because we're called by the Bible to shepherd the people, to shepherd the sheep. And that's what you're called to do. Like you said, it's a hospital. People are hurting now. And this is a confusing time in America. And the church, the people need, the, they need to hear the Bible taught more than ever before. So I'm, I'm just saying, man, th this, as we talked in the beginning, that Praise God that this is just the beginning of the revival for our country. Hopefully the last revival before Jesus comes back for his church. As I know, we're all greatly anticipating. And thankfully, you're working on the ark there, but we're not going to need it because we're going to go straight up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love when Chuck would say that. It's, we're really at the time where this is no longer political. It's really biblical. And I think with, with that statement, we got to understand you know, if you need a lawyer to help with you, do that. But don't stop doing the biblical stuff. And I think feeding the sheep, you know, and taking them through the word. And as long as people are here, if their churches open up or whenever it opens up, I'm just wanting to give them the best meal. You know, Chuck used to say, I want to have the best loved and the best fed sheep. And I think if that's our goal, then these people are going to go back to their churches and be an influence, hopefully, you know, for the better. And there's a, you know, there's a lot of people that they are so desperate right now. If we only knew and talked with, with you know, so many people, it's like it just that burden grows as you begin to see right. the needs and people literally um, contemplating suicide. Should I go to church or should I just end it? Wow. Uh, people thinking of just drinking themselves to death. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th just the, the needs of the people are just huge. And you, you, you're, it's almost like you're, you're, you're handcuffed. But I, I believe that we're really not. I think we should just go about what God's called us to do. And just like Paul of Acts, just trust him and pray and uh, wait for his peace and guidance. And he'll show us where to go and where not to go. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Hey, I'll just take this uh, just little break here to say I'm Tom Price, editor of Calvary Chapel Magazine, and have the privilege to interview uh, Pastor Mike McClure from Calvary Christian Fellowship in San Jose, California. It's a Calvary Chapel affiliate. He has been open since March 31st. And I think I heard you say the words, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong. You said 
I'm not going to close again. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's what um, I, I did say that. And that was the, the week we were going through Psalm 73. Mm-hmm. And I said, the reason we're not going to close again is because without God's sanctuary, you know, the psalmist wouldn't have recognized. He, he was distraught. He was almost slipping away. Mm-hmm. Barna just came up with a, a, a poll just in the last week or so that over 32% of evangelical Christians are no longer watching Zoom for their church services. They're not going to go to church again. They've walked away from the Lord. I mean, this oh. is in my, this is Barna. You can look it up on his website. And mm-hmm. and it's almost as if like the last days, Jesus warned us about the thing. He said in the last times, you know, iniquity or lawlessness is going to abound and the love of many is going to grow cold. But if we are faithful and endure to the end, we're going to be saved. And so what he's saying is there's a huge amount of the church that is growing cold. And that word right. cold, like breathe to just, we're no longer, I think of the face mask. I think of us just literally seeing that happen today where people are just losing love for one another they're hiding they're in their homes they're panicked they're afraid they're 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 seeing iniquity abound with the riots they're seeing the problems and the lies in the media and they know these things aren't all right but they're not knowing what to do and i think this is when the church should should have the greatest voice this is like paul there on the ship going to rome saying you guys should have listened to me (laughs) and we should have that kind of authority to go and tell (laughs) I, you know, I, I believe that. And we had a mayor here in our town that thanked us for that. And I, I yeah. and, and I don't think my job is to go reprimand him. He was a Christian man, Chuck Reed, our previous mayor. And uh, he, he would uh, come and say that the true leaders in his view in our town is the pastors. And a lot of pastors, we don't think of that. We just think I'm just doing my job. I have a small flock or I'm not making a big difference. But that's not true. I think we're making a huge difference. And if we close... We're, we're telling our church we don't care about them. And that's how a lot of people have seen it. Like, my pastor doesn't care about me. And so that's something that we have to work really hard to say, no, we do care. And here's what we're going through and to communicate. And I started sending emails out to people uh, to, in our church and letting them know we care. We want to open as soon as we can. And somewhere, like, if you open, you're breaking the law. <laughs> and I have to explain, well, this is what the, the law is. This is what God tells us to do. And uh, it comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, that we have not the right to forsake the gathering together of the saints. And wow. we need to do that. How much more we see that day approach? Mm. Yeah. About Israel becoming a nation again, all the things that are taking place that we know as pastors, these are the last days. We need to be vigilant and we need to be faithful to, to preach God's word because this is when it counts. You know, this is when it's important, right. and this is when people are on the fence. And to go to church can make the difference between life and death, heaven and hell right. for these people. Yeah. And so every week, I think we were closed. I was sensing that burden, mm. and since we've been open, I've just seen those burdens lifted every week as people come into church. They wow, walk in here, coming and off of them. You just see the people that hey, there's a group of people like me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I live in crazy land. Can't go <laughs> to the door. You know, you, you got to social distance from everyone, which I don't think is biblical at all. And, you know, what would Paul say? Hey, greet one another with a holy kiss unless they have COVID-4. You know, make sure that you don't spread that. So it's just those things you got to look at Scripture yourself. And that's my conviction. I just don't believe in it. I I think it's not good for you. Um, God made us to be uh, uh, in fellowship. And fellowship you can't do through through a video chat, really, as well as being in person. Only about 7% is conveyed through watching a screen like we are right now versus right. being in someone's presence. You got body right. language and so many other things. But sure. yeah, church, it's essential for our our whole uh, trichotomy. Yeah. And, and this, you know, and that's what's coming out of this is that the church is essential. Jesus Christ is essential. Worshiping God is essential. And we've gotten a little taste of what it feels like to have that right kind of slipping away a little bit and i I think in a lot of ways this has really been a wake-up call for us all hasn't it mike what could happen if we kept silent if we keep selling i have a book right here if you haven't read this book this is a a great book by lutzer when a nation forgets god he wrote this 10 years ago and in this book he talks about the pastors being wooed by hitler and how they should just trust the people To him, you take care of the churches, but Hitler said, I'll take care of the people. And the pastors capitulated. And then what happens is they defund the police. They close down the schools, all the Christian schools, which is another thing. If we 
if we don't open our school, we're probably not going to open next year. This isn't a public school where they're going to get paid for, for being closed, which I don't think is right anyway. And I think this is a direct attack against Christianity. I think what's going on with Gavin Newsom right now is he, whether he knows it or not, he's trying to shut down the church. He's trying to silence the pastors, um, trying to just ignore what we're saying. The media is doing a good job of that, too. And then to, to close our schools, which I believe our school is even more fruitful in a lot of ways than even the church, because in one year, our first grade teacher can do it to, to that class, that student in one year that takes a pastor 25 years to do. I mean, oh, you can teach incredible. Think about that. so many more hours. And so yeah. I had one year at the uh, years and years ago, I think the time you first we first met. I'd had David Barton come that year. I had Tim LaHaye come and share at our church yeah. that year. And I had them. And they all told me the same thing. And that is, if you start a school, it will change the city. If it's truly a discipleship right. school where you're teaching them the scriptures. And that's been our motto is to raise up ministers and missionaries. And so we have got to, if we close, we're, we're, we're following the same suit that the, the churches did in Germany and right. capitulating to Hitler. And I think that's right. where we have to look at this yeah. and really examine. And if you haven't read that book, it's a fantastic book. Yeah. So uh, all you have Calvary Christian School, is that what it's called? Yeah, C Calvary Christian Academy. Academy. Uh, how many students do you typically have there, Mike? We have a school through uh, 12th grade. We have about uh, 25 to 30 students in our high school, just a few years old. And then we have about 170 students, I think, with our kindergarten through eighth grade. So under around 200 or so. Okay. But it's it's not real big, but we turn away about 30 percent. We live in a town that has only uh, two percent that go to church. And how many of those are really born again or, or know the Lord? So that's our that's a qualification for kindergarten through mm -hmm. through high school. Right. <clears throat> I know if, we, if you talk to Bill Stonebreaker out in Honolulu, their Christian uh, their Christian school is being overwhelmed with parents trying to get their kids into school, into that school b because of what's being taught in the public school, which is a whole nother thing right there, but a whole nother uh, talk right there. But uh, it's, it's amazing. Even non-Christians, people who don't believe, they realize the only place that you can get a, a, a true education now is in some of the Christian schools. Yeah, part of Marxism is to dumb down the school and education. There's another great film, uh, Curtis Bowers, who I've had at the church, wonderful guy, and he has the uh, documentary called The Agenda. I think you've uh -huh. seen it in yeah. Agenda 2. These things are almost prophetic that he talks about, but I thought it was a conspiracy DVD that someone had given me, so I just left it on my desk for two years, and then someone right. else had told me they watched it and how good it was, so I finally watched it. I thought, oh, this is really, he was a congressman. But he talks about all the things that are happening in our country were the same things that happened in Cuba, in Russia, in all these other countries that are now Marxists and communists today. And so we're seeing the exact same attack in, in our country. And I think we just need to know what it is. And I had Curtis when he came, and, and this is what he basically answered, the number one thing we can do to fight this. And I'm all ears. I'm listening. Like, what do we need to do? And he said this. He said, you just need to have dads be dad. Mm. Right. He said, if you can just have everyone be a dad to their kids, watch what they're watching, see where they're going, be a part of their friends and their lives, train them up, do your own uh, uh, private company, you know, even if you can. And don't send them off to college unless they're going to be a, an engineer or a doctor or something that requires that, because most higher education now is destroying their faith. It is. But I think we have had a lot of people that want to come to our school because the learning is so much higher than the government schools. We're, we're testing kids, even in local or the private schools, when they were leaving, going into high schools, they're testing out of grades. And I think we've lowered the standard and we're following the curriculum and the common core is really, there's a lot of Marxism in it. It's definitely bad education. Right. And Christian schools, they're the, they're the last hope for America. And so we have to open them, despite what the government says. I just think not one kid's died in California of COVID. Not one kid has... Uh, pass it on to grandma and died. Not one study, none of this. And this is what they're telling right. you. And people call and tell you, get mad at me. And I'm like, just show me a study. Just show me we're going to do it because this is the right thing to do for the sanity of the parents. I have seven kids. But also <laughs> because 
this is uh, this is what they need. They need the education. They need they need the scriptures, just like us parents are going to church. They need to 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 be in school. It makes a big difference. Uh, I've seen it. Uh, speaking with David Trujillo at Calvary Chapel um, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, there and uh, Jose Hernandez in Watts at the Calvary Chapel there. They're telling me that 90% of the kids in their youth program, whether they're African American or Hispanic, they don't have a father figure in their life or at home. And mm -hmm. that's the role that their churches are, are fulfilling because and that they, they see already the benefit. They see these kids, their lives are being transformed because they're at least filling that role. And that's their goal is to and uh, and Mark Abrams in Philadelphia is doing this too. He just he just had a, a he's starting an initiative about bringing fathers uh, to in, into the lives in the inner city. So it's a lot of exciting things that are go happening because of all this bring to a head. So um, so just to kind of wrap it up, what, uh, Mike. What, what, how, how would you in, just encourage the pastors uh, with, with with how to deal? With with the with the riots that are going on, with the protests, and with the COVID, how would you, uh, like in a final word to them, how would you encourage them to kind of look at all this? I would say, the Great Commission hasn't changed. In the command, I remember Chuck, you know, just encouraging us in uh, just watching my dad as an example, and so many other Calvary pastors, is it hasn't changed. The society might change, but the answer is still the same. And just to to love people, you know, to love them, to preach the word, and to pray that the Holy Spirit would move. And I think as we ask God to do those things and are faithful just to show up, sometimes it's just showing up mm -hmm. and, and having the 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 boldness and praying for boldness and encouraging people to pray. We have prayer going on every night at church, every night, and oh. sometimes we'll have. You know, 10 people, sometimes there'll be over 50 people and they just need to pray and to give them an opportunity to pray and let our requests be made known to God, cast our, our cares upon the God who cares so much for us. And I just think that we need to do the same thing we know we need to do and, and be unafraid, just to be unafraid and to be fearless in that sense of if we're afraid, then everyone else is going to be afraid. But exactly. if we're strong and we know what God's word says and we're like, like Peter, you know, or Paul getting ready to. I think we may have lost our connection. Mike, are you still there? It's on his end. Oh, he's still there. Okay, wait, I think we lost you for a second there. I was raptured. Yeah, they were, I was afraid of it. Hey, Pastor Mike, would you uh, close this in prayer? Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to talk with you. I'm excited for what God's going to do. Would you close this in prayer, please? Yes. Thank you, Tom. Father, I just thank you, God, for Calvary Magazine. I thank you for what Tom's been doing faithfully these years. And I pray that you would just bless, Lord, every pastor that's listening. I pray, Lord, that you would just strengthen our hearts, Lord, that you would strengthen our, our, our knees and our hands that are just even hanging down. Lord, give us strength to do what you've called us to do. Give us the boldness, Lord, in a day and age where we, we don't see it. We don't see people standing up, Lord, and we, we need that. And I know, God, that when we see it, it, it gives us courage. And so I pray, God, that you would continue to raise up more pastors, more leaders in our country to be fearlessly preaching the word of God and that we would trust you, Lord, that we would reckon ourselves to be dead, Lord, that we would allow only you to be all that we want to please and all that we want to see. And we we pray, Lord, for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, as, as Tom mentioned, Lord, that we're on that, that precipice of a revival in the church and an awakening in our culture. And I pray, God, that you'd use us to be faithful to save those in our town. Lord, it's life and death. It's heaven and hell. And give us that perspective and give us, Lord, that fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit that we be faithful to do what you've called us to do. Thank you, God, for entrusting us with this work in front of us, putting us in the ministry. Lord, may we be faithful to invest our talents, our time, our effort, our energy wisely in the kingdom to build up your kingdom 
for your glory. God, go before us. I do pray you'd protect the church. I know, God, that the gates of hell cannot prevail. And I pray that you'd protect the Christian schools across the country. Lord, that we would have the boldness to open and to love these kids and to do what's right in your eyes and to please you first and foremost in all of our decisions. So I pray, God, that you go before us, give us strength, and we praise you, and we pray that you'd come soon. We say Maranatha, and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mike, we'll ask you to stay on a second, but we're going to close off here. Thank those that are that have been watching or listening, and this will be on our website and, and on Facebook. So God bless you all, and goodbye. From Fredericksburg, Virginia, from Calvary Chapel here. Amen.